Deep in the heart of the Berkshire countryside at Genetic Studios near Reading, London band then Jericho and their producer Martin Rushant are listening to the final mix of Fault, a song for the band's debut album. Rushant is well known for his use of computer-aided music production with bands like Human League and Visage. Just uh, a few years ago, the job of record producer was really coaxing the best performance out of an artist that was possible. Uh, now we use computers to uh, aid that process in, uh, in quite a serious way. I think one of the changes, uh, not so much in my job, but in the way I interrelate with the people I'm working with, is that composition and ideas are now much more important than, than the ability to, to play technically. The production process begins for Russian when he listens to the band's demo tape. He must first decide where and if computers can help. Yeah, all right. What's the tempo on it now? 110. That's OK. Tempo's fine. But it's got to be... If we're going to make a dance rock track, then we've got to hold the tempo all the way through. So I think we'll use some machine assist on it, on the drums, possibly on bass too. Um, I think the intro's a bit long, isn't it? Don't you think? You can cut the intro in half, yeah. You can cut it in half. Well, both sections of it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the intro and the so uh, the, the flow funky of bit. the intro will be the same, except each section and will will be shorter. And then go go straight to the verse. All right. Well, look. What we're going to do now? We've got the tempo one one one, one zero. Yeah. Okay. We'll get the part written out and program up a Lin guide yeah. pattern for you, That's and then we'll take bars. it from there. Yeah. So it gives us four bars. Right. Then Jericho's drummer, Stephen Wren, works with Russian's assistant to program a basic drum pattern into the Lindrum. This won't end up on the finished track. It's a guide to ensure that all the other electronic instruments keep time. The Lindrum is not, strictly speaking, a synthesizer. The sounds are digital recordings of real drums, encoded on a memory chip. Well, the Lindrum we now... The Lindrum was really... A few years ago, it was a real breakthrough. In, in drum machine technology. Before then, you'd, you'd had these purely sort of things that didn't really sound like drums at all. Uh, so Lin really did, did sound vaguely like a drummer. And we use it to lay down the basic patterns and ideas of the drummer on tape to use as a sort of uh, um, check against what we're doing to make sure that our higher level machines are playing the basic patterns correctly. OK, Steve, looks like that's the programme. Let's see how it plays. The various machines at Genetic Studios can send each other electronic signals to keep in time. Useful here, because Russian's master plan for the track involves recording most of the drum kit onto tape in the ordinary way, but generating the snare and bass drum sound from the Synclavier, a sophisticated computer and digital synthesizer. So while the cymbals and tom-toms are unalterably committed to tape, Steve and Neil can tinker with the snare and bass drum sound until they're both completely satisfied. Now it sounds, that sounds much too heavy. A bit louder. Yeah, it's too loud. All right, let's stop this thing. I'll have it down to 35%. Well, I think the pulsing bits we'll program, yeah? We'll sample a sound off you. Yeah. And we'll you program them in. Yeah, you need a much constant. Constant level out if you do it. Yeah, right. And that'll also, we'll be able to lock something up with it. That acoustic we were talking about when we were working the track out, we can lock up with that. At the end part, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. But I think um, the intros and some of the accents, you sh we'll play those live yeah. and mix them in with, with the machine pulse. Okay, Jasper, what we're going to do is we're going to sample this high G into the Synclavier, right? right? Okay. Okay. Now, I'll do accounting because otherwise no one knows when you're going to start. And Neil's got to hit his button before you play right. to set the computer storing. Right. So if I count four in, if you hit it on the four and you hit it on the one, yeah, we just okay. want one note, let okay. it last as long as you can, 
Yeah. As clean as you can, all right? Okay. You ready, Neil? I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three, four. That's good. Okay, that looks good. So let's hear the high G back first before we sample the next one, okay. whilst we're set up on it. That sounds all right. Good. Jasper, play us it again, just so we can get a comparison. So that's the real one. Okay, let's hear your one again. If you mark start that one. One of the uh, interesting side effects of um, digital synthesizers is, is, as we mentioned before, their ability to sample sounds. Not just sounds like elephants trumpeting in telephones, but actually off other people's records. Um, drum sounds, bass sounds, brass sounds, in fact it goes on all the time. I've had cases of I've heard a record um, and I thought I'll steal, steal the snare drum sound off that, it's really nice, and got it in the machine and looked at the waveform and found out it was one of mine that's been pinched from somewhere else. So it's going on all the time and uh, I do it quite a lot. Uh, what the publishers and people like that are going to say when they find out actually what's going on is going to be rather interesting. But um, to give you an example of some of the things that are done, um, I've got an album here by an unknown who I think has got a real future, a man named Mr. David Bowie. And uh, about a couple of years ago, he put out an album with a track on it called Let's Dance. And the bass drum and snare drum sound on that record was rather good. And has been pinched by many people, including me. So let me just play you, if I can get that thing down. A bit of Let's Dance. Let's Dance by David Bowie, which I think is familiar to some people anyway. So we rather craftily sampled the bass drum and snare drum sound off that record. In fact, I've got it loaded in the machine at the moment. Sometimes this machine decides that we're doing something that really is morally wrong and refuses to do it. However, we're trying to teach it that we live in the real world and not in some sort of utopia. So, Neil! <laughs> Neil is going to reboot this machine so that I can but show you. It doesn't like me still. So, as I was saying before the machine decided to disobey, uh, I've loaded in the sounds from this Bowie track in here, the bass and snare drum. It's quite remarkably similar. So, we used that on... Uh, an album by a young man called Billy McKenzie who trades under the name of The Associates on a track called uh, 13 Feelings, which if I can just uh, find it. And it's not necessarily so that we use the sound exactly the same as we sampled it. We may tailor it to suit our own particular track. Which band is it? Two. Okay. Well, I think it's... same drum sound from the record we heard before. See, it doesn't sound exactly the same because we've tailored it to suit our own track, but it was the character that we were after. And no doubt some crafty devil has sampled that sound and used it on his record. Sometimes I hear a record and go, that drummer is magnificent. What tremendous feel and power and stuff there, and only to find out two weeks later I've been listening to a machine. But I haven't been listening to a machine. I've been listening to a human mind working through a machine. You know, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it makes you any a better carpenter by the fact that you can bash nails in with your fist with no machine. You know, the smart guy uses a hammer. It's less painful. Yeah. 